Hello all. Today we are going to see the need for computers. Again this is a generic session on computers. People who are new to computers who can attend this session you are welcome. First of all what is the need? Why should we have computer? If you look at our way of inventions in terms of numbers, calculations, first thing is we had the five fingers. The fingers are the first computers. Fingers and the human brain. Human brain is the supercomputer even today. With fingers you can count, you can do some calculations, but that was not enough for the human being when the evolution started in terms of the science and mathematics. Then what happened is people invented something called abacus. This abacus will have, this is also known as slide rules, you will have some slides and beads attached to it. You move the beads and do some calculation. The abacus is the next generation to the regular fingers. So it was doing some calculation. Then if you look at our day-to-day uh, -day usage, the clock is one of the intelligent calculation mechanism. In the clock you have got 60 second equal to 1 minute, right? And uh, 60 minutes equal to 1 hour. So inside the clock most of the times people see only the quartz electronic clock. Now if you look at the old clock, the pendulum clocks, there you will see something called cog wheels. Inside the clock, there will be a wheel with teeth. There will be another wheel with bigger teeth and a bigger circumference. What will happen is one tooth in that wheel will be longer. So, this is the second hands. If this moves like this, when this bigger tooth comes over here, it will make, it will hit this one, it will move by one in this direction. So every time the pendulum, the pendulum is attached to it, the pendulum move in this direction and this direction, it moves 60 times, this wheel, this particular wheel make, will make one round, a relative movement of this wheel will affect this wheel, then it will make, it, this will be the seconds hand, this will be the minutes hand, there will be one more wheel, this will be the hours hand. Based on the relative mechanical movement, mechanical movement, based on this there was some calculation which is the duration that we had uh, through the clock. Again, moving forward, this was not also sufficient. Then, there was a lot of researches going on, uh, probably during uh, the 1940s or even before World War I. Uh, there is something called a Turing machine. The Turing machine was invented. This used to do calculations in a better way. Once the physical calculation, then the mechanical calculations happen, then the electronic or electrical and electronic way of calculations started happening. Because of this, they were able to do more calculations in less time. So the next thing that came is the calculator rather than simple addition, subtraction, etc. 
So the evolution goes like this. So the calculator came, so we were able to do more calculations within less time. But this was not sufficient. So what people did is they wanted decisions. The calculator does only numerical calculations, but this decision is nothing but logic. What the human brain does is the logic. You think something, you relate some other facts, then you come at a decision. For this logic, we needed intelligent machines. So, a computer is nothing but a machine that does this logic and calculations at a faster space. So, if you keep on doing at a slower pace, it is not sufficient. So people started doing a lot of calculations with logic. I hope this is clear before we move on to the next step. Now, let us see some more thing related to the computers. We have seen the parts of the computer which are CPU, memory. Then within this memory we saw RAM and ROM but this is like volatile. That means we, we remember something then we forget something. So that is called volatility. But we need some permanent storage that is where we had this hard disk where information is permanently stored. So this hard disk is also there. And within the memory we have got the logic that is being processed by the CPU. We have got the keyboard etc. But to all the parts in our physical body we have got the nerves to conduct from brain to parts. Same way how does the computer do? It has something called wires. They are called bus. This is a special word. Bus is very similar to the nerves in the human body. So through the bus the instructions are carried from the CPU to all parts of the system to take decisions, to remember information, to recollect information. All said and done with the electronics coming into place there were two early computers, EDWAC and ENIAC. These two are the very early computers in the history of computers. Post this, uh, the companies like Intel, IBM, Motorola, then the USA Defense, they all did a lot of research. Through this, the era came into the silicon chips. The silicon chips really made a revolution in the computer industry. The earliest silicon chips were known as like 8085 processor, then 8086 processor, 80286, 80 386 and today if you see Pentium, Xeon, those are all Intel brands, same way Motorola has, AMD has, Celeron processor. So these chips, what they did is, the silicon chip is nothing but millions of transistors. Millions of transistors inside a small part. And these transistors will do all the calculations, computations and the logic. So this is how the computer has evolved over a period of time. And if you look at the computer, the parts of the computers are very similar to what we have in the human body. And this is in a nutshell. If you want to get more information, you can look at Wikipedia 
and then get more information about computer's history with the years and which, who are all the people involved in inventing those great things. But this is in a nutshell. Thank you.